testing, you must be in series, meaning this will touch the negative lead. The wire that has unplugged from here will go to your positive probe, and it will be in series, not in parallel. If you test amperage in parallel with your source, you will either blow up your meter or blow a fuse. I've seen both of them happen. You've been warned. Same thing goes for microamps, milliamps, megaamps, kiloamps, anything to do with amperage, you must put your probes in series with the circuit. Only series. I cannot emphasize this enough. Okay, so we're going to get rid of the battery. Bugger off. Okay, got a little power supply here. We have switched to uh, resistance. So we've got a couple of resistors on the board. They're actually kind of, actually we'll use this one. This one has bigger resistors. You can probably see that a bit better. All right, so we have a resistor here and it is labeled as orange or yellow, orange, black. Resistors are not, are you in, okay, yeah, there we go. Resistors are not polarized, which means you do not, there is no negative or positive on them. So this is uh, 42.8 ohms. Now we have another one here that's brown, green, red, gold. And this is 7.48 kilo ohms. Notice how the meter is auto-ranging between the components automatically. Very useful feature. Especially if you're lazy or you just don't feel like taking your finger off the part. So we got a couple of small resistors on here. I'll try to get in and I'll weasel in here and see if I can actually get these on frame for you. I can't, honestly can't even see what this one is. This looks like it's uh, orange, black, brown. So that's 258, 260 ohm ish. And of course, all of these resist resistors have a gold band tolerance, so that's a tolerance of plus minus 5%. This one's 1 1.5, 1 1.6. See? If you notice, the auto ranging is actually throwing it off a bit. Sometimes you physically just have to kind of go in and just set the, uh, the manual range. So. 1.7 kilo ohms or 1.77 something or other kilo ohm. Now we're going to hit the shift function, or the, on my meter anyway, and we're going to go to capacitance. Now we've got a couple of capacitors around here, like uh, capacitor, 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 capacitor. Okay, so we're going to look at the capacitor. We know the capacitor's here. Okay, those two. Whatever you do, do not physically touch a capacitor that you are not aware of of its charge state. Capacitors can hold in excess of hundreds of volts. A capacitor's job, if you remember in the early episodes, a capacitor's job is to hold a short amount of electricity. Capacitors can be polarized. So we're just going to go and put these on these pads. It's going to take a little while and it should auto range. Or I might actually have a blown fuse in my meter. Yeah, I think I actually have a blown fuse in the meter. Because this should be auto-ranging, and it's not. Oh, learn something new every day. Need to buy some new fuses. Yeah, well, if this meter... Let's go to the other meter. Does this meter have capacitance? This meter should have capacitance. Do you have capacitance? No, you do not have capacitance. Fuck with you. All right, can't show you capacitance. Capacitance ain't working. Fuck it. You get the point. All right, so we're going to go over to the diode test. The diode test, right now we're in continuity. And it's got this little alarm symbol. Anywhere that there is common ground. None of those have ground. That should be a common ground. No, apparently it's not. So it's quite literally continuity. It just tries to find where all of the common ground points are. Um, you can quite literally just wail through a board. Right? There's a common ground. Just to see where all your ground points are. Yeah, there's my on camera. Yeah, my on, on frame. There's another ground. And a lot of times in circuits, they use a, a common ground, meaning all of the negative leads are actually coming right into the same point. So there's another ground. There's another ground. So that and that are grounded together. So if we do that and that, it should still be grounded. You get the point. Now. Diodes. Diodes are one-way gates for, for electricity, which means it allow electrons to flow one way, but not the other. So, um, of course, OF means out of field or out of range. So, uh, where have we got a couple of diodes? Diodes. Where's that power? It's in front of me. All right. Um, unfortunately, this power supply has some really small diodes on it. 
So uh, I don't know if I can actually get this in frame. It is kind of small. But um, diodes are polarized. It only allows voltage to go one way. Uh, some diodes only have 0.6 volt drop. Some of them have a 0.4 volt drop. Read the spec sheet to your actual diode. Now, uh, silicon diodes will actually look uh, kind of glass-like. They should have about 0.6 volt drop. These big guys here that look like uh, you know Bullet Bill from Mario Brothers, these big black ones, uh, those should have, uh, I believe, a, a 0.4 volt drop. So, knowing that a silicon diode does not have more than 0.6 volt drop, and this is only doing 0.458, we know this diode is good. Now, we put it the other way to find out See if it's going to allow reverse voltage. No, it is not allowing reverse voltage. This diode is functional. So we'll go to one of these big uh, germanium style ones, the ones that look almost ceramic. Where do your voltage drop? 0 0.165. This is definitely well within range. And we'll do a reverse bias to it. And oh, this diode actually might be faulty. It should not allow voltage to go back the other way. Oh, it's doing its job. It just has a slower reaction time. All right, let's just test uh, one or two more just to be safe. We'll actually put this one in reverse bias, and you'll notice how as time passes, it actually gets more and more resistance until eventually it'll hit infinity or should. Yeah, these diodes might actually need to be replaced. Now, keep, oh, this one's working. Now, keeping in mind that these boards were actually pulled directly from my salvage bin. So, the drop off this one is 0 0.403 volts. That's definitely within range. How about how's the drop across this one? Nothing. No. 0 0.161 volt. It's within range, but I don't like the fact that it's actually allowing reverse bias or a polarity to flow the wrong way. See, that I don't like. This is telling me that this diode is actually unhealthy. I might want to actually go out and replace this. So if this was, this is actually a working power supply out of something. Um, the power supply actually failed. So if I were to replace this diode and any other components that were on this board, I can reuse this power supply. Or if you don't care about noisy, noisy lines or perhaps more voltage than you should have, you can go ahead and use this. Now, the, uh, the diode check can also be used to check fuses. Now, I got a little fuse here. Okay fuse works. So if you can't physically see if a fuse is working or not, there you go. All right. Those are some of the tips and techniques on how to what, what to look for in a multimeter and how to use one. I'll put some information in the show notes, maybe some vendors and suppliers and different brands of, of multimeters, depending on uh, you know what kind, of, uh, what kind of electronics you want to get into. So I hope this was uh, in any way, shape, or form informative. Otherwise, bugger off.